Um, hi, I'm Chi Lei from UT Austin, and uh, I'm going to talk about uh, discrete adversarial attacks and some modular opti optimization, and I will focus on its application to task classification. And this is joint work with Ling Fei, Ping Yu, and Michael, who are from IBM Research, and my advisors, Alex and Indigit. So uh, we know that deep learning methods have been proved proven very successful in many different domains. However, one problem of it is their vulnerability to adversarial attacks. So many of you must have been, uh, have seen similar uh, images. Like this left image is um, an original input that is classified correctly as a sports car. However, by adding some small attacking noise, it is then uh, labeled by this silly deep learning model as a toaster. And this reflects our um, definition of adversarial examples, which are instances with small intentional feature perturbations to make models predict incorrectly. So this phenomenon not only applies for continuous data, but also for discrete data. Take this as an example. This is a year preview um, about a pet shop called scooby -Dose. And uh, our task is to do sentiment analysis to tell if this is positive or negative. And we can tell that from uh, we both love scooby -Dose, a language like that, this is very positive. And the, the model can predict it um, pretty well as 100% positive. However, by conducting our adversarial attack, uh, we can completely flip the prediction to 100% negative by simply uh, paraphrase that one sentence from like the pricing is also cheaper than some of the big name conglomerates out there to the price is cheaper than some of the big names below. So they are basically same meanings and this seems irrelevant to the topic. However, the model's prediction is completely wrong. So this, this also reflects the small feature perturbations we talked about, uh, and the way say that uh, this small concept for text domain should be a human should not be able to detect if the text has been manipulated or not. And in this talk, I will actually focus on general framework of generating adversarial examples with discrete data. So apart from the document I just mentioned, uh, it can also apply for code where we want to attack malware detection and uh, to URL so that we want to confuse those uh, malicious website checkers. So uh, now let's look at how we can actually generate the adversarial attacks. So first, firstly, we want to find out some possible candidates uh, to replace the words so that it meets our requirement of small feature perturbations. And we use some similar uh, method proposed by Kuleshev, a recent work, that we can uh, generate some um, candidates for each word based on their semantic and syntactic distance. Specifically, take this sentence as an example. We look at each word and we generate synonyms for all of them. Uh, but some of them might, may not fit in the context, and we use a language model to filter out those, those words. So now, for each word, we may have several possible candidates that uh, uh, meet our requirement of small feature perturbations. Now we want to make the model predict incorrectly. How do we do that? Uh, we want to find a combination of them. And uh, in order to, to do that, we um, give each combination an uh, index to represent it. So we use a vector of the same length as the input document. And uh, here, like this zero means for the first word, we keep it unchanged. And like this one, it means that for the fourth word, we replace it as the first candidate. So. Uh, each indexing represents a unique uh, transformation. So now with this kind of tool, we are able to do a target attack. Uh, we can write this target attack. Um, let's talk about notation. So, so X is the input document, 
And TL is the word paraphrasing index by this L we just mentioned. And this V is the embedding that takes those discrete data to a numerical vector so that we, we can actually optimize them. And the C is the classifier that outputs the target label's probability. So if we want to do a target attack, we are actually trying to find this label we, we defined that um, will find the best transformation label by this L uh, that uh, make the prob probability of the output probability the highest with as, at most M word replacement. Or otherwise, we can also um, write this formulation as a set function. Now this set is actually the support for this label L, which means which words we are trying to replace. So now our problem is formulated as a maximization over a set function under the constraint of, uh, under the cardinality constraint. With this form, we are able to derive some theoretical results. The first one is the problem we just mentioned is actually NP-hard. So even for some convex uh, classifier, we can find some instances that this problem can be poly polynomially reduced to subset sum problem, and it's hence NP-hard. And secondly, this kind of formulation to maximize a set function over a cardinality constraint remind us of this famous uh, fact that the problem of maximizing a monotone submodular function subject to a cardinality constraint actually gave us a pretty good approximation with greedy method. And we can show that for any kind of classifier, our target function is monotone non-decreasing. So now the problem is, uh, do there exist some non-trivial neural networks that yield some modular functions? Uh, and uh, actually, we have found several of them. The first one uh, is called world-level CNN. This is a quite popular classifier to deal with a document. And uh, this architecture is just, uh, we take the input document uh, embedding to go over the convolution layer with uh, different filters. And then we take a max over time pooling and followed by a fully connected layer. And we show that with this architecture, if the, uh, the convolutional uh, windows have no overlap and if the uh, final layers weights are non-negative, then uh, the function we defined is submodular which means a uh, greedy method can find one minus one over E approximation. And this, the second example is recurrent neural network. We know that RNN and its variants like LSTM and GRU are very popular to be used for text classification. And, in, and here we find that uh, an RNN with arbitrary T time steps, uh, but with single hidden nodes in each layer, and if the activation is non-decreasing concave, concave, this function uh, f uh, is submodular. So apart from those theoretical results, we also want to uh, design some attacking algorithm that is both efficient and effective. We want to do so because uh, greedy methods are effective, but can also be very slow because it replaces one word at a time. And we, uh, since we, uh, if we have a white uh, box attacks and we have the gradient information, we want to use this gradient to uh, further accelerate the gradient search. And uh, that's what we do. We use um, the gradient information to guide the gradient search, uh, take this sentence as an example, we, for each time we will look at the top three words with the highest gradient magnitude and uh, we think these words are the most important ones and then we look at, uh, look at the possible replacements among those words and take the one combination that will uh, maximize the, uh, the output probability the most and so that we can replace three words at a time uh, by uh, 
only looking at these three words. We don't even need to look at the other words replacements. So this should be more efficient. And uh, we verify this point by conducting some uh, experiments. We compared these two recent work, uh, the first one by Kuleshev. Uh, this is kind of the object-guided greedy because it's the greedy method that doesn't look at gradient. And uh, the second one is actually the gradient method. It simply uses gradient to find uh, which word to replace. And the greedy method are uh, like effective but slower, and the gradient method are the opposite, and we want to show that our method can take the advantages of both of them. We use an word level CNN we mentioned before to do the attack on three different tasks. The first one is we try to detect if a news is uh, fake or real, and we compare with this compare with these two methods, and we show the uh, attack success rate and the time cost for all three methods, and we can see that our methods are able to flip more, uh, slightly more um, <clears throat> samples, and using uh, only like one sixth of the time cost as greedy method. And the second example uh, data set we use is for spam filtering. And again, we are able to uh, attack more samples uh, with relatively low time cost. And the third one is the sentiment analysis for year reviews. And uh, again, similar result uh, year. Um, to verify that uh, our definition of like small perturbation uh, by uh, using small semantic and syntactic distances uh, makes sense, we also do a human evaluation. We ask five people to randomly evaluate the 60 text for each, ta each task. And uh, uh, this one is about human prediction accuracy. And we show that on uh, both the emails and the uh, YIP reviews, um, before or after adversarial attacks, uh, human evaluations, human predictions have uh, similar accuracy. And the second one is we ask the people to evaluate on a scale of one to five, how likely the tax is human written. And again, you can see on all three uh, data sets, before or after adversarial attacks, um, they show similar results. So to conclude that uh, on the theoretical part, we proved that to generate the best adversarial example is NP-hard. And we also show some, uh, find some uh, non-trivial NLP classifiers that uh, yield some modular set functions. Uh, this justifies greedy attack. And on the practical side, we propose a, a gradient-guided greedy method, uh, which has been proven uh, both efficient and effective among some prior work um, on three different data sets. And we also use human evaluation to verify uh, the threat model. Uh, and although not mentioned in this talk, we also use sentence paraphrasing to expand the space of attacks. And we also use adversarial training to show that we are able to improve the adversarial robustness of our model by the examples we generate. Uh, so if you are interested, please refer to our paper for it. Yeah, that's it. Uh, then do you have questions? All right, we have uh, plenty of time for uh, two, three questions. So uh, I'm wondering, like, if you were to kind of like compute the uh, the running time of the algorithm as a function of the size of the state space or the sort of the, the word space, like, how does it scale? with the, you know, the size of the search space that you have, the number of words and the number of uh, uh, alternatives? Uh, so like um, it should scale linearly to the um, space of, uh, to the like dimension of mm -hmm. the input document. Yeah, Great. because we need to loop over all the uh, words. 
Hi, I'm Yusuf Ackerman, Bloomberg LP. I noticed in your talk that you've found certain classes of networks that make them vulnerable to your attacks. I'm wondering if your theoretical results could be applied the other way, of saying there's certain properties a network would have that would make your optimization problem um, untractable, and in which case it would make them resistant to these types of, these types of attacks. Uh, are you asking if uh, there are other new networks that should be also be vulnerable, or like what kind of property we can find? To I'm asking make... what type of property you could find to make them not vulnerable, to make it that we could have some more guarantees of securities versus these types of attacks of outcomes. Uh, yeah. So. Um, so uh, what I can think about is like if the model has more randomness and it's uh, harder to be attacked and there are some uh, many other work that says that if the model has good Lipschitz bound and it's hard to be attacked. But in our work it's like, uh, like orthogonal to those results. Thank yeah, you. we can talk offline about some other properties maybe, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's uh, thank Chi again.